Welcome to the ADP Project. You're with your host, Stephen Jeff. G'day, mate. How are you? Good. So we are going to open up our own KFC slash secret herbs and spices. Absolutely. But there's are. only five. There's only five. I've only got five. And, um, you know, it's I've picked the top five based on what is the most popular spices used. And some of them are not what you consider spices. Okay. But there are technically spices. So... That's well, a, it's a bit of an interesting one today. One of the things that we believe is that food is medicine, yep. as Hippocrates said. Yep. And, and one of the things that we, we look at uh, is, is obviously spices. Yeah. And I'm interested in spices, Steve. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I, there are certain ones. Now, we're not going to cover uh, anything that we've done um, big in depth on before, like turmeric. Turmeric, so, that's right. Uh, Matt, in the description or flashing up on Steve's face right now was, I don't know, <laughs> something is, is the episode where we, we sort of went into depth about turmeric. Oh, turmeric, um, yeah. Is there any other, Steve, that we've sort of covered before that we don't really need well, to talk there, about? there's one that I've kind of left a, a bit of a, a hole for is ginger. That's a spice. Oh, so, yes. it's huge. So we I love talk, ginger spice. Yeah. Well, so is half of Britain. Jeez, yeah. yeah. Ginger. yeah um, like do you remember her from yeah, the of 90s? Yeah, I remember her. Carol. If Was you want to be my Jerry, lover. Hel- 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 Jerry Harrow. Jerry yeah. Harrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a soul. You've got to get with my friends. Three hours later. We talk about spice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's ginger spice. I just, ginger. yeah. But, but we should talk quickly about ginger and what it does. It, it's, it's powerfully anti-nausea. Yeah. But what it's... It, it's, it's great. Brain... I mean, pregnancy, I remember that yep. coming out. Absolutely. I love ginger. And I, and I, and I take a lot of ginger. Mm. Um, yeah. I just, I can't get enough. It's funny because ginger is, is great for arthritis as well. It, it's known for an anti-nausea thing, but it's got so many other benefits. We could do a podcast on it. It's one of the only other herbs that has been found to reduce calcitonin gene-related peptide in the brain. Wow. Yeah. And that's so, an important chemical for, wow. remember what disease that we talked about it about two months starts ago. Starts with A, ends with Zymers. No. L. No? No. It um, starts with M and ends in eye grains. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Does it actually help with um, uh, disease states like dementia and other things like that, Steve? Yes, because it's anti-inflammatory. Okay. So it can help somebody who's got Alzheimer's? Yeah, but so does um, any anti-inflammatory. Like indomethacin was the first drug. they Because indomethacin is an anti-inflammatory, just mm. a drug. Yeah. And they gave it to people with arthritis, old people mm. usually. And um, those people who received the anti-inflammatories didn't get Alzheimer's or got less of it. So there's, we know that it, we knew in the nineties that, that it was in a, anything anti-inflammatory would help Alzheimer's because, okay. you know, in the, in the medicine, all those other ones aren't nutrients for the brain. Like ginger could have some weird polyphenol oh. thing, but, but in, right. in the medicine has 25 milligrams of in the medicine. So if we're not talking about ginger, we've done a good job of talking about ginger, but yeah. we will, we'll do a whole podcast you on could, ginger. You could do it till the cows come Because the other ones incredible. as well too. And again, yeah. I, I no, I don't want to, uh, all right, so. Can we rank these in terms of most impactful? All right. Well, so better, do you, do you want to start that one till last? Leave that one till last. So we'll leave the most impactful one until last. Because I, I like that, Steve. It's, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like unpacking a present, right? See, so, these are all good, these spices. Okay, but all right. So so we're going to rank them out of 10 as well, too. Oh, and we're going to leave ginger for another day. Yeah. Yeah, I love ginger. Because I, I would actually, yeah, let's do that. Because I'm really excited about ginger. Can we talk about ginger spice that day as well, too? She's pretty cute. Yeah. Well, all right. absolutely, Steve. Probably someone said the other day, oh, ginger spice is really old. She's probably older than 50 now. And I said, so am Damn I. It. That's <laughs> not, not that old. old. That's not old. <laughs> all right. So, so you want number five on the list? Give me number five. Um, nutmeg. Oh, so nutmeg. I, immediately when I think of nutmeg, I think of that Christmas drink, eggnog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, okay, tell me about nutmeg, Steve. I, thing, I don't think it's something I really used very often. No, but it came up as a popular spice, so somebody's using it. Tastes good. Um, it's, it's potently anti-inflammatory and analgesic. So in other words, it relieves pain. Oh. So this is what its claim to fame is. Um, it, it's potently anti-inflammatory. Now, I, I know it's five, but it's not like the, the, the worst of them. But, but what it does is it's a potent COX-2 inhibitor. So it inhibits cyclooxygenase 2, which is the enzyme that all the drugs try and inhibit, you know, like, like um, meloxicam, those sort of ones. So it's a very, very good one to add. And you've got to remember, you can take these with drugs. You know, you just don't take them at super high potencies. Mm. And in fact, the only reason why this one's a five is because if you take too much nutmeg, it can be toxic. Really? Yep. It reduces progesterone levels Oh. and is anticholinergic. Okay. So it reduces choline levels in the brain. That's at super high doses. Right. How high is super high? Oh, a spoonful. They said a teaspoonful of it can be toxic. Right. And right. It's, it's and what would happen to you if you did that, Steve? Well, nothing unless you're pregnant. 
and then it's then it's not not real good at all. Okay. Yeah. So this is why I I didn't. What happens of, if you're pregnant and you take too much of it? You reduce progesterone levels, and that that means progesterone is the progestation Brings, one. Yeah. It means you can't abort fetus. No. So so it's a good one, and and analgesic means it's great for pain. So if you've got a chronic pain condition, you know, say you're 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 getting up in years, and you you got the arthritis, and you have got a bit of pain with that. Nutmeg is a great thing to get involved in. It's also very good for the microbiome. It uh-huh. benefits the microbiome as mm-hmm. well. It's also potently antioxidant. So it's, it's got some great antioxidant properties, and you'll find that, that that'll come a bit of a theme. In fact, herb number four is going to be even more of a potent antioxidant. So what is nutmeg? Um, in outside of eggnog, what else yeah. is... Nut- Matt, can you look up some recipes for nutmeg? Oh, recipes for nutmeg. So nutmeg, oh, yeah, it's a sort of a... Because it's got like a, it's it, it's in the same sort of realm as cinnamon, so it gives. Oh it yeah, a, there you go. Best combination with nutmeg is cinnamon. Yeah. So nutmeg, vital member of the mixed spice, but essentially, uh, especially good with cinnamon. Yeah. Uh, perfect, um, welcoming, warming aroma. Yeah. And it also has a, an affinity with cardamom. Both great on hot coffee and in or in coffee and cake. Hot coffee, hot coffee with. With cinnamon and um, nutmeg. Yeah. Actually, that, that does sound pretty nice. It does sound nice. Yeah. Ah. Nice for baking. Okay. Groovy. Nutmeg is widely used in uh, black uh, diaspora cooking because of its history in African and Caribbean cuisine. Okay, Ooh, so yum. obviously nutmeg's found not just in Indonesia, but in those territories as well. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. The other benefit of it is antimicrobial, so it's anti antibacterial and antifungal. Okay. So it's a great one to take orally for your gut. Okay. It, it kills aspergillus and all these other nasty things. Really good, good one for killing those sort of things. So take it orally; it helps your microbiome. Cool. Great polyphenols. All right. Um, also, what would, you, what would you? Yeah. Oh, a couple more: anti obesity and anti diabetic. Oh well, I better get on it. <laughs> yep. Anti cancer. Yep. And it's good for your liver. And it pr- protects uh, your brain against um, aging. <laughs> That's a pretty good one, isn't it? Jeez. Every time so, I come away with these, I've got yeah, to, I know. You got just to start taking it. Yeah. Uh, it's also extremely good for your car- heart. Really? Yeah, cardioprotective. I guess if you look at and it. This is number five. Like wait, wait till we get some of the good So ones. what are you rating that one out of, out of 10, Oh, Steve, it's huh? going to be an eight. Yeah, I thought an eight. Just because of the potential high-dose toxicity sort of thing. Sure. Now, if you have a spoonful of cinnamon, just a comparison, it's not toxic, but it's very powerfully irritant, and it can be dangerous if you inhale it into your lungs. Yeah. Have you seen those idiots on TikToky, Facebooky, Instagrammy who have a spoonful of cinnamon? No. Oh, do yourself a favour and don't look that up because there people do stupid things. Oh man, oh. I think a Darwin Awards is, was yeah, created Darwin for something. Right? So that's nutmeg. How cool is that one? That's very cool. I, I'd agree with you. Eight out of ten. It's cool. Yeah. Definitely now, something now, I want to put in there. This one is a good one that, that I eat at home okay. on eggs, um, and it oh. is... Paprika? Yes. Yeah. Did you see that? Through no. The... No, no. Ah. But, but paprika is excellent on eggs. I think it's a yeah. really nice um, uh, accompaniment, Steve. And this is something we all want to get on because this is a paper... I don't, I don't use enough paprika, to be no, honest. Yeah. No, no, we don't. So tell me about paprika. Well, what they did in this study, and it goes on to all the other benefits in here too, but but... What they found in this study was they gave it to people who have 100 healthy volunteers who were assigned to have an oral capsule of um, propica um, or placebo. So it's a placebo-controlled trial, and they measured the visceral fat in their gut. Okay, And what they found at the end of the conclusion, um, intake of propica um, for 12 weeks significantly reduced the abdominal fat area and BMI in healthy overweight volunteers without causing any adverse effects. Visceral, correct? Visceral fat. Not subcutaneous. Not subcutaneous. There was something that was some subcutaneous. I mean, even though visceral is more dangerous than subcutaneous fat. So visceral is stored around your organs. Subcutaneous is obviously the front porch as Steve. front porch. Yeah, and and Steve's back back veranda. Um, But (laughs) I think if we, if we, if that was true, then everybody would be taking it. But however, yeah. specifically for guys that, that have a lot of, um, you know, that hard belly fat, yep. um, this could be something that you could add on your eggs. Just sprinkle it on your eggs. Steve, that's a great idea. Great yeah. idea. Scrambled eggs is fantastic, actually, because you could yep. do a few of these things, Steve. Yep. I know you could. You could absolutely. And do you know what else huh. it does for your, um, for your health as well? It reduces total cholesterol. It also, and eggs don't give you cholesterol. 
No, they don't. But, I mean, people would be going... You and if, if you're worried about LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, allegedly, yep, yep. it reduces that as well significantly. Okay. It improves the LDL to HDL ratios. It improves adipectin levels, which is a, an appetite suppressant, so it helps regulate appetite. Not. Um, it helps with leptin, but it, was, it didn't reach clinical significance, so we'll skip over that. It also reduces hemoglobin A1C, which is the blood sugar, so it helps with blood sugar levels control. Wow. How cool is that one? Super cool. It's like it's got all these results here. Yeah. Just from simple, you know, paprika. And it, it, it just goes, it also reduces uric acid I just, levels. You know what? I forget, Steve, when yeah. I'm cooking to, no. to just, you know what? I'm going to go out and get a spice rack. I'm going to go out and That's get all these idea. spices. Yeah. Because I cook eggs all the time. Yeah. I think it's one of the, like, I reckon it's a wonder food, really. Yeah. It's just so good. So convenient. Yeah. You know, poach. I mean, I do it scrambled. Yep. When Tony's out, we live on scrambled eggs. Um, I hate yeah. to say it. Tony knows yeah. that. Um, because because the boys eat it and yep. they make it and they love it. But adding a little bit of paprika, adding a little bit of garlic, adding mm. a little bit of this sort of stuff could actually be really cool. I know. Incredible. Uh, it's red in colour. So yep. I'd imagine it would have um, high levels of antioxidants in yep. there too. Yeah, absolutely it does, particularly carotenoids, which yep. is where it gets its cardiovascular benefits from. Huh. Where so, does paprika come from, man? Oh, paprika, yeah. There you go. Uh, look at the colour. Look at the colour. It, isn't it vibrant? Yeah. Like and, it just and, looks, it's a really rich red, uh, almost looks like the spice from June. Yeah, yeah it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Made so, from uh, dried and ground red peppers. Traditionally made from capsicum um, of the annuum varietals. There you go. From the longum group. Mexico. Oh, Mexico. It makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, Capsicum what? annuum species indigenous to central Mexico have been cultivated for centuries. Christopher Columbus discovered paprika in 1493 and brought a ship laden with spices from the Americas back to Europe. Incredible, isn't it? So, so this is a really good one because there's a double-blind, randomised, placebo-controlled trial on it showing that it reduces all this cholesterol-y, abdominal fat sort of stuff. So it's great, particularly for men. Yeah. Particularly if you're overweight. Yeah. You help you lose weight. Will, will it do it all for you? Can you give up exercise? No, and no, but it will help. And it tastes good. And it's good for you. I like you it. And it helps all sorts of things. So that was a pretty good one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give that one a nine because it's just the colour. I like the nine. Yeah. All right. You wait till you get to number one. This is All this right. is actually, yeah. This is a, this is number two. Number one's a, a mystery one. Oh, okay. Keep us in suspense, Steve. I am. I am. All right. Let's go. Now, this one, people are going to go. That's not a spice, but it is. Black pepper. Yeah, it's a spice. Black pepper's a spice. Yeah. Yeah. So, black pepper, I think, is probably in Australia one of the most common things that are used. Do you think? Would you say? I'd agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I mean, again seasoning food. I think yep. um, uh, Celtic yep. uh, sea salt and black pepper. Yep. Um, actually, Tony got a Celtic sea salt with um, chili flakes in it, which is yep. actually pretty good. Now, now um, this one, this one has got a resume like you wouldn't believe. Like this paper, I'll just show you. It, it goes for absolute pages and pep, pages. Is it pepper nigrum? Yeah. Um, okay. So what it does is it's it's potently antimicrobial, so it's very very good for the gut, yeah, and helps kill parasites and everything in the gut. Sort of like our our, our other mates there, nutmegs and all that sort of thing. But what it does different to that one is that it also inhibits biofilm buildup. So biofilm protects the bugs from dying when you're exposed to a poison. So this it, breaks it down. Right, it creates like a little little shield, yeah. little shell, and this yeah. breaks it down. Yeah, exactly. Okay. West coast of southern India. There you go. Oh, they've got pink, green. Yep. Ah. Now, the black one's the most medically researched, so okay. if you like them all, get the black pepper. It's very good. So it's also antimicrobial, and the way it works is it, it, it inhibits bacterial efflux pumps, so it, it causes the bacteria to become toxic and die. So it's got a really cool mechanism of action. I love that one. Yeah. So it kills all the microbes. It's also a potent antioxidant against not only reactive oxygen, but reactive nitrogen species. So there's the peroxide free radical, which is a dangerous one, but the, 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 the nitro peroxide one is the worst one, and that one it inhibits as well. So it's an, a broad spectrum anti antioxidant across yeah. the board there. So, I mean, wonderful stuff. Um, super, uh, all the antioxidant effects. Um, it also exhibits anti-cancer effects against the following cancers. You ready for this for a resume? Yeah. 
breast cancer, colon cancer, cervical cancer, and prostate cancer. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And prostate too. Yeah. So get into this black pepper stuff. It's really good. Mm. And it, just crunch it up. Have it on. It, it's just easy, easy. I think a good pepper grinder, most people have got them, right? Yeah. Um, I've got one that you twist, but people roll them too. It's a technical term. <laughs> also, it'll help with your diabetes. So it also decreases the level of cholesterol, triglycerides, and low-density lipoproteins and increases HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. So that with paprika are yeah. working well together. Yep. Very much so. It's also anti-inflammatory, analgesic. In other words, pain, you know, stops pain. Anti-convulsant and neuroprotective. Wow. Isn't this incredible? Very. So this one has a lot of good stuff and it has been um, regarded as, and the paper, I'll quote in the paper here, the king of spices. Get out. The king of spices. That's look, a bold claim. Bold claim, but look at that. It says it there somewhere there. The king of spices. Yeah. Of all the spices there are. So I would imagine that most homes would have pepper. Um, yeah. and, and Steve, do we recommend, I would just for for um, the effectiveness of it, is having whole ground whole peppers yep. and then grind them yourself instantly as, yeah. as opposed to having pre you don't remember the saxon salt which is just oh, yeah. rubbish yeah um like there's nothing in that they add iodine to it but what is that that's a sodium um chloride sodium chloride yeah it's terrible yeah uh, as opposed to like proper sea salt and everyone and again we said this before everyone gets carried away with himalayan salt right yeah. but everybody should have um pepper as well too most yes. people, most homes i imagine virtually every home would have salt and pepper mm mm-hmm. So add that to your food. Mm. Put a little bit of pepper on. Don't overdo it, but... The white pepper, just chuck that out. Use black pepper. Yep. Number two. Number two. You're going to love number one. Uh, It's a bit of an obvious one. Well, anyway. Number two is cinnamon. I do love... I have cinnamon cinnamon every morning. I know. The main claim to fame for cinnamon is it makes... Blood sugar. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. And that's why I take it. I mean, there's even a big review paper on it here. It's 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 2022, but it's it's got its control of dyslipidemia, dysglycemia in type two diabetics. Hundred percent. It is remarkable what it does. What was the other thing that we recommended to have on your morning coffee? Coffee. Oh, cinnamon. It was cinnamon. Yeah, it was cinnamon. I reckon nutmeg and cinnamon yeah. in your morning coffee, mate. What a great way to start the day. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you, give you an amazing stat here. Worldwide. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Ages 20 to 79, guess how many people have type 2 diabetes? Like as a percentage or a number? Number. Globally, did it say? Globally. Remember, the Earth's population is 7 billion. I think it's 8 billion now. Oh, 8 billion? Can we get a, can we get a count on that? <laughs> yes. um, I've lost count in the way to work. Yep. Um, You're not going to believe uh, this. Oh, have got diabetes. Got type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes. Can I say... 500 million people. 480 million. How did you get so close to that? Oh, just the, 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 the number. About the half a billion people yep. have type 2 diabetes. Yep. yep. And cinnamon. It's crazy, isn't it? Now, now, the reason why I love cinnamon is because of all the studies on it. Now, I'm just Give gonna, it to me, Steve. I'm just going to show you them all because I can't go through them all. Look, mm. they're all mostly randomized control trial, like randomized placebo Cinnamon. It, it, I, put it this way, Steve. I'm looking it's forward about, to number one because cinnamon probably is my absolute favorite. You can use it on everything. And I love sweet cinnamon stuff as well too. Cinnamon. I mean, our yeah. American friends love it on their, their um their what are they Donuts? pretzels? They have it on their pretzels, don't they? Do they? Yeah, they have it on everything, I think. Cinnamon's a great anyway, give me give me the highlights, Steve. What else is it good for? Because I know that it's great for b- blood sugar control. Blood uh, cholesterol and lipid metabolism. That's its famous claim. Like ridiculous heart lip. disease. Really, really good for, yep. your, for your lipids. Yep. So it dramatically helps your heart. and But I just thought the reason why I put it up here as number two is because of the diabetes pandemic. Epidemic, yeah, yeah pandemic. not epidemic, yeah, pandemic. pandemic yeah. Half a billion, half a billion people. So cinnamon is like um, um, sort of like for the half billion people, it's so easy to get in your diet. Cinnamon goes with everything. I've seen cinnamon rub on lamb, but any sort of um, – a protein shake or anything like that, or if you're baking, and you know you shouldn't have too many sugars if you got, um, but sugar-free baking, you put cinnamon in there. Just get into it. Like, you know, you can buy it from spices, very cheap, mm. and you can have those sort of sticks of cinnamon too. You mm-hmm. can put in things. One of my absolute favourite lollies growing up was a chocolate-coated cinnamon stick, and it was oh, sweet wow. and it was so nice. I don't know, I don't know what it is about cinnamon, man, but yeah. I'm addicted to it. 
Well, I remember cinnamon donuts in Southland Shopping Centre in Melbourne where um, they, were, they were made fresh there. And, the um, smell of it, right? Yeah. It's like, you know those cartoons where they're literally like, yeah. led along by their nostrils? And you could watch them being made. This machine would press them out and they'd flip them over and then they'd roll them and put across stick and roll them in cinnamon sugar. It's terrible <sighs> for you. Yeah. But, but the cinnamon's cinnamon, good. The cinnamon's good. <laughs> if, if I got it and licked it, oh, no, there's sugar on it. But, but you know, you, you get what I mean. This I stuff do. is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Now, the number one spice. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I know. I know. And I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't leave it out. It was bloody turmeric. Oh, you put it back in. I had to put it back in because it was so good. It's like puts those ones to shame. But but you can't do it. It's just a classic spice. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. On so many levels. Yeah. Cancer, heart disease, all those things, antimicrobial in the gut, anti-inflammatory, analgesic, great for, for any sort of pain condition you've got. Antioxidant. It's got it's got all those things that we talked about. Anti lipids. It reduces lipids. It's got them all in one. I absolutely love turmeric. And I mean, you can't do a spice because we'd just get too many emails. You know what we should do, Steve? What's that? We should do a a a top ingredient podcast where we whether it's herbs, yeah. whether it's spices. And just do it. Just do a quick recap on 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 all of them, if we have or haven't spoken about them. Just all the benefits and the, and the reason why we'd call them superfoods, right? Yeah. Because like turmeric keeps coming up to the top, and pe- oh. and I know we talk about it a lot, but everybody every day should be having turmeric. Absolutely, you know? you get it in your turmeric latte with a with a dash of, of cinnamon on the top. There you go. Oh, yeah, How's that? Go. That sounds good. Also a nutmeg, I feel like or one right there. but a nutmeg as well. Why not? Like, like I mean, cinnamon. Whenever you say cinnamon, you can say nutmeg. Because they're just so, so good. interchangeable and they work and they well work together. well together. Yeah. You but know, turmeric, so, yeah, it's it's you know I, I almost uh, you know like we don't need papers on it because it's so potent that it's good for most conditions you've got. Neurological, it's great for the brain. It is um, really good for the gut. What is it with these Indians? They really have a, a stranglehold on a lot of really cool herbs, right? Oh, yeah. There's well, so much in that in that area. So turmeric wins. It couldn't not. You, you, you know, you can leave it out, but it's just like the elephant in the room, isn't it? Well, it's, Steve, I love it. It's going to make no. me have more paprika, more nutmeg, and more cinnamon. And black pepper, actually. I do use quite a bit, but probably not enough. Yeah. Um, any concerns, Steve, over leaky gut with black pepper? Um, only if you take excessive, if you concentrate the piperine down, and that, that's a problem. But if you're having cracked pepper... That's what I mean. So if you're having cracked pepper and you're, yeah. you're doing it yourself, and again, nature knows best. It does. Keeps coming back to that. Great right antimicrobial for your gut. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to combine that, black pepper, with turmeric. I'm oh, joking, yeah? I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, let's not do that. All right. That's a good one, isn't it? Thanks, Steve. No worries. Always good. And we'll be back with more next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah.